Hello Grade 3 and hello to everyone at Munson Elementary. And I hear that this year you're going to learn about storytelling, which I think is a wonderful thing. Well, I have to think it's a wonderful thing because that's my job. I'm an author and that means I tell stories. I put them into books, but I'm telling stories. And stories is something we all do whether we think about it or not. Because every time you talk to your friends and you say, tell your friend what you did on the weekend, you're telling them a story. Because you're telling them something that you want to say and you hope they'll want to listen to. And so I'm calling it a story because lots of things happen to you on the weekend. And you're choosing what to tell and what to leave out. So if you started with, I woke up at seven o'clock and I swung my legs out of the bed and I stood up and I had breakfast and then I brushed my teeth and then I got dressed. Well, that unless you had green slime for breakfast or unless your teeth fell out when you were brushing them, that's not gonna be a very interesting story. And by the time you finish telling your friend you put on your socks and your underwear and your jeans and your t-shirt, they'll have gone to sleep before you get to the exciting part. So you actually know that. You already know that main thing about storytelling. When you tell your friends about your weekend, you jump straight to the good bit. You'll say, you never guess what happened or guess what I did on the weekend, or guess what my dad brought home? He brought home a puppy, or my sister fell over and broke her arm, and we all had to go to the hospital. So, because if it was you that broke your arm, I hope your friend would notice that you've got a cast on. So you're already making the story. You know what to do. And we can make stories like that from something that's actually happened to us, or sometimes we just make them up. So when I was in grade three, one day I saw a little island when I was going to visit my grandparents, and I thought, well, I'd love to run away and live on that little island. And so then I made a story up about it. And I made that story for quite a while. And... I'm going to read you how it eventually ended up a long time later. In a palm tree, on an island, in the middle of the wide blue sea was a girl. Nim's hair was wild, and her eyes were bright, and around her neck she wore three cords. One was for a spyglass, one for a whirly whistling shell, and the other a fat red pocket knife in a sheath. With a spyglass at her eye, she watched her father's boat, sailed out through the reef to the deeper dark ocean, and Jack turned to wave, and Nim waved back, though she knew he couldn't see. Then the white sails caught the wind and blew him out of sight, and Nim was alone. Whatever happened or needed doing, for three days and three nights, Nim would do it. And so that is Nim's island, and... Those of you who were at the school last year will probably remember that you did that for one school, one book, which is a very exciting thing for me. That's lovely to know. Now, as, as well as just making up a story, sometimes we have stories that are born from things that happen to us. So not exactly like you telling the story of what happened on the weekend, but we turn it into a story or we take little bits of things that have happened to us and we twist them and pull them and make them grow and then we mix them up with little bits of other things that other people have told us or that we know because we learned something at school or because somebody told us their story or from other things that have happened to us in a different time, in a different place. And we twist and pull them all together and mush them up into a story. And that's 
kind of how I did it for the Rainbow Street Shelter series. Now this Lost a Dog Called Bear was the very first book in that series. And that happened because when my husband and I were going to buy a farm, we had his farm dog from when he was a boy, but we were still living in town. And the farm dog didn't like living in town, so he jumped over the fence, five foot fence, that we thought would be quite safe. And he raced down the highway and he got so frightened he he ran until he actually saw a pickup truck stopped at a traffic light. So he jumped into it and he traveled 80 miles in the back of that pickup truck. And it wasn't until we offered quite a big reward that we got him back a few weeks later. Well, then 20 years later, we sold the farm and we moved back into town in a town by the beach. And the dog then, who was named Jack, jumped out of my husband's pickup truck one day when he was getting gas and he raced across the highway and ran up and down the beach all day and we looked for him everywhere and we ran up and down the beach and people kept telling us oh we saw him 10 minutes ago and he was going that way we saw him 15 minutes ago he was going that way it was a terrible day but we got the dog back and i knew that there would be a story there somewhere and so I mushed up those two stories and then I gave the dog bear to a boy. And now I haven't ever been a nine-year-old boy, but I've been a nine-year-old girl and I had a nine-year-old boy, I have a son. And I've also moved house a lot. So I went to 11 schools between nursery school and grade 12. So I know how it feels to move around. So I mushed up all those things and came up with Bear. And a bit the same for Abandoned, a line called Kiki. Which I'd always wanted to tell this story ever since I was 12 and our friends were given a surprise gift of a lion cub. They were very, very surprised when they went to Denver Airport from where we lived in Colorado Springs and they got this parcel, but it wasn't a parcel. It was a lion cub. And so we got to get to know this lion cub and I always wanted to write her story. So I changed it around and I got that story. So most of the stories in the Rainbow Street Shelter series were like that. They were bits of stories from animals that I had known or things that had happened to me or things that people told me and just all chopped up to make a good story. Well, I hope they're a good story. And the other most important thing about stories to remember is that you have your own stories and you are the only person who can tell your stories. There are so many stories just waiting in you for you to tell them. So good luck with your storytelling this year and your reading and goodbye for now.